fly a plane, I lost interest in it. Water skiing, I lost interest in it. But uh, this is something you don't conquer. Anything that can fight to the death and not utter a sound, well, the person that puts the most and works the hardest is supposed to win. And usually that's the way it comes out. The drive in it is to be the best. We call it sharpness. When you can hit that peak, when that bird is at his best, then he'll win for you because you make your luck. I can pick out the best bird by his conformation, his bone structure, but I can't look into his heart and tell you how game he is. You know what you said in your sleep last night? You said, Randy, you mother, I'm gonna kick your shit ass clear across this room. You remember that? Who's Randy? You can't fool me. If you can talk when you're asleep, you can talk when you're awake. I just want you to know I know it. That's the mighty sand spur, huh? <laughs> well, what kind of money are we talking about for this hack? What, a hundred dollars? <laughs> Shit. I figured on taking you for at least a thousand. I'm risking my two hundred dollar ace against your one hundred dollar bet. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put up another $900 against your car and trailer. Even money. That's the car and trailer plus the hundred. Okay? I'll catch you later. I was doing the Sandspurs bill wasn't exactly illegal, but I didn't feel too proud about it. 
I only wanted to boost the betting odds by making the gamblers think that Sandspur's bill was cracked. 750. They want this all on Sandspur. Forget it. You know I can't get a four to one bet. <laughs> Crack vocal? Well, now I don't know who to bet, you or Bert. <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to get some out, huh? Five pounds, two ounces, even. You handling, Jack? No, Ralph's gonna handle it. He's about half ounce over. You're gonna have to cut away, Frank. Uh, he can have the half ounce. He can have shit. You know there's no two ounce leeway in an official SCT hack. What I meant was, uh, it don't make no never mind to me. It makes a difference to the better, Jack. Two, even. See that, Jack? She got a cracked beak. Oh, yeah? Well, if I'd known he had a cracked bill, I'd give you some odds. Who wants to call it? Tails it is. That's the short gaffs. Set them low and outside, well. What we have to find? short heels. Sandsbury was a cutter and he fought best with short gaps. Little David was used to long three-inch heels. By me winning the toss, I'd given Sandsbury a slight advantage over little David. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an extra hack between Mr. Jack Burke, Burke Farms, Jimmy, Mr. Frank Mansfield, Mansfield Farms, Decatur. The official Southern Conference hack no time limit, no draw, both birds with short gas. Mr. Ralph Hansen, a handle for Mr. Burke. How are you, Prof. Daniel Blue? I'm a little bit. I got you. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit. You're not going to take that, huh? I'll take it. I'll take it, buddy. I'll take it. 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 I'll take
down, Frank. Yours and mine. It's three to one. Great stands for a game but lame. You ought to give up this shit, Frank. Well, don't look for me in Milledgeville this year. Wash them? so mean to take a family's one more home away from them. Well, now, little lady, we made a bet, you see, and uh, we shook hands on it. Nobody shook my hand. What about me? What happens to me? Uh, no, I don't know about that, Frank. I got, I got me a lady friend up and kissing me. Little David will meet any challenges, any 5-2 challenges you want to show against him. Only put your money where your mouth is in Milledgeville. Sorry for her in a way, but I didn't worry about her. She was pretty and young, a good lay. Hell, she'd get by anywhere. I'd piss on her and the horse she rode in on. That's an old trick. You tried today, Frank. <laughs> I've done it myself, and I've gotten away with it, too. The trick, you see, is not to cut the groove too deep. If you cut too deep, it's liable to cost you your car and trailer. Two years ago, this metal could have been in your hand, but you had to shoot your mouth off and lose the bird you needed to win. Very fast. You want to know something, boy? 
I am the finest trainer and conditioner in the whole world. And my bird here, he can beat anything you've got to show, man. Anything. Anything. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm getting tired of listening to you brag, Frank. God damn it. Why don't you put some money where your mouth is right now? Come on, Frank's just talking. Jack, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. He's been doing all the goddamn bragging. Let's hear a little action now, all right? Tomorrow, who's got the best No, part? we're going to find out right now, OK? 200. Yeah. Flat out, no odds. 200? 200 even, OK? Give your money to Lucille. Hey, Lucille, keep the change, sweet. You ready? OK, Bill. You want to go do it? Go, let's go. OK, Bill. Frank, have you got another five-pound rooster you can use in the derby tomorrow? It's too bad, Frank. Now you'll have to withdraw from the derby, which means you ain't got a fighting chance for the medal this year. You got two little faults, Frank. You drink too much and you talk too much. Yeah. I ought to keep my mouth shut. I am. I'm going to keep my mouth shut until I win that medal. I'm going to tell them to stick it up their ass. Oh, those sons of bitches. It's 530. You gonna sleep all day? Come on out in the yard. We can have breakfast later. for these battered grays. White Lightning here is the only Gamecock I've got left. I haven't fought him yet, but just about everything I've ever learned about breeding has gone into this one. And when the time comes, he'll outcut and outshuffle every Gamecock in the South. Cock's legs hang down in perfect alignment with his body. He's a close hitter. This cock's legs were perfect. You want this chicken, Frank? He's yours, then, for $500. I know the price is unreasonable, but pay me and you can take him. I wouldn't be selling him if I hadn't promised Martha I'd quit cockfighting. He's yours when you bring the money. Go out and have some breakfast. Then I'll drive you down to the bus station. Where did I want to go? 
a lease on my Decatur farm I had two more years to run and it was all paid up. But without any game foul and uh, without any funds to buy any, wasn't any point in going out there. First thing I had to do was get some money. your voice, but you can still write. We haven't heard from you in six months. Well, if it ain't the junior bird man. Welcome home, Baba. How long are you going to stay? Response, right? I suspect uh, you've come home to collect that honest debt I owe you. Too bad, Bob, because I'd have a hard time raising 25, let alone 2,500. But it's your house, so you're welcome to stay as long as you like. Would you like a job, honey? Huh? My old room was at the end of the front hall next to the bathroom. Nothing had changed much in two years except for all the junk had been stored in there. Things sure have a way of getting out of place after a time. Frank, you busy? There's somebody here to see you, Frank. And I bet you can't guess who. Well, at least you could put your shoes on. He's on his way. Still his gentle, warm-hearted self. Come on in the kitchen, Randall. What for? She's pretty quick on the horn. Is she all right out there? She's fine. day off, I have to drop by Miss Roswell's. When I mentioned your name, you should have seen her face. She got all excited. I know she remembers. My goodness, what do you think I am, the welcome wagon? I haven't seen you in six months, and you expect... I don't know what you expect. It's hard to get inside of Stonewall's head.
Francis said there was a chance you might decide to stay this time. Is there any truth to that wild rumor? Joe Lee asked me to marry him. Got myself a piece of land. Joe Lee gets me, he's getting a bargain. I told him I'd give him an answer. Are you hungry? Want to get a hamburger or something? I was getting kind of hungry myself. Frank, he was one of your favorites. He was everybody's favorite. Did I ever tell you about Johnny Owen? Boy who peed on the wall in study hall? Teacher wouldn't let him go to the bathroom. He kept raising his hand, saying, Teacher, I can't hold it. I ain't kidding. So finally, she wouldn't let him go to the bathroom after 30 minutes. And he just got up and walked back to the corner and peed on the wall. She took him down to the principal's office. And Mr. Thompson says, son, you are expelled. And he says, I don't give a shit. I'm going to join the Marines. <laughs> he did. He jumped, he jumped in his 52 Chevy and started out to San Diego. And then when he got to New Mexico, he ran into a bridge post and killed himself. I think it was suicide. We know what it proves. The value of self-control. If he hadn't had to pee, he'd be alive today. Just like you and cockfighting. Something over which you have absolutely no self-control. Married and children. I want to have them here where we both have roots. I'm not going to marry you and live on some old gamecock farm in Decay. I'm not going to wait for you forever. I've waited long enough.
Jake, will you please tell me what's going on here? Good morning, Mr. Mansfield. We're here to move your house. Frank, what's happening? Come for the house. Frank sold it. Oh, he can't do that. Can he? You better call your daddy and tell him he's having company. Sick of game foul anyway. Let's go get your rooster. Those two battered grays are in fine feather again. You can have the hen, too. Can't you wait till Frank finishes his breakfast? I'm not rushing him. I can get you a good deal on a dozen Melhorn blacks if you're interested. Mr. Omar, he helped me get the Melhorns last night from the Express Depot. Lightning. Mighty pretty bird, Mr. Frank. He's soft now, but he won't be long. Melhorn blacks look awfully good, Frank. But we had to water them at the station. Think of those baggage people must be afraid to water chickens en route. This year he's. I don't know about him. <laughs> yeah, I can see he's high spurred, but he's an ace cock. Game chicken. Tests out pretty good, huh, Frank? <laughs> Nothing else to do, I reckon. I don't know, Buford. That was a seventy-five dollar rooster with two wins already. Might have pitted him in the Almont pit first. He be tough, all right. But Mr. Frank, he say when a bird got high spurs like that, he missed more than he hit. So? When did he tell you that? There's a lot of things I don't like about cockfighting, but it's a business. You're either in or you're out. And I'm all the way into cockfighting. Frank, you and I need each other. Why don't we form a partnership just for the season? Wait, before you answer me. Think it over for a day or two. If you conditioned and handled, and I took care of the business details, well, let it go for now. But bear in mind, I'm filthy with capital. Well, no matter what you decide, why don't you come over for dinner tonight? I'll take that high-spurred rooster home with me. And tonight, you and I will feast on stewed melhorn blackened dumplings with a bottle of poulet fousse. 
stewed chicken for two at thirty-seven fifty a plate. <laughs> Farmer says, I gotta get a young rooster in here and shake up these hens a little bit. So the old rooster hears him say that. Farmer drops a young rooster in there and the old rooster says, listen, I gotta tell you something about staying in the condition. He says, he says, come on with me. He says, we're gonna run around this cock house about three at a time. So you've got to stay in condition if you're gonna take over this barnyard and take care of these hens. He says, I'll show you something. Young rooster says, okay. He says, now you follow me. First, we'll crow. We'll wake up the farmer. Come on. It's okay. So he goes, rah, 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 like that. And the young one goes, rah, 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 rah. and the farmer wakes up and he's looking out the window. And the old rooster's racing like that. And looking back over his shoulder, the young rooster's six paces behind him, see? And the old farmer takes one look and he picks up a shotgun and he goes, blam! And he knocks off the young rooster. And he says, damn it, that's the third faggot rooster I had this week. <laughs> What do you say, Frank? Partners for the season? Partners, oh baby. You better not stay out late tonight because we got an early start in the morning. <laughs> Like people, every gamecock has to be handled differently. You know, a chicken's brain's about the size of BB, but within those brains, there's an infinite variety of character and personality traits. A gamecock is the most stupid creature on earth and the most intelligent fighter. I ran the cocks. A gamecock has to fight fast, and the running strengthens his legs. I ran them 20 times the first day, 30 the second, increasing the number of runs 10 a day until they reach 100. Now he can run like a striped ass ape. Well, if all that doesn't bother him, he can fight in Times Square on New Year's Eve. <laughs> How are you getting along with Frank since he stopped talking? Hell, I like him better now. <laughs> Before his big mouth lost him the cockfight of the air medal, he was on to my tail all the time. Buford do this, Buford do that. Now he do what he has to do, and I do what I do. Everything is nice and quiet.
runner. A runner's a cock that runs, Omar. Pete wins, damn it. Y'all's his cock left the pit. Pete, he was confused. He wanted to get back to the pit. He just forgot where it was. Here, but the river is there. Yeah. Mansfield, I saw you five two up on the board. My roosters won two fights this year. At least the guy I bought him from said he won two fights. I'd like to bet you twenty five dollars even money. Hmm? You got yourself a bet, son. But you're gonna have to fight him short heel. You got a pair? No, I ain't got no heels. Yeah, no problem. I'll lend you. Want me to heal them for you? No, I don't need nobody to heal them for me. I've healed lots of birds. <clears throat> this here's an extra hack. Mr. Mansfield's white. Again, Junior's gray. Both birds weigh 5'2", fighting in short heel. Bill them up. On your score. finger in a cock's eyes Come like on, that, that foul? with that sharp fingernail, that's a foul. That's the way to throw a fight. Now, Mr. Mansfield, look, I didn't know that. I swear I didn't know it, and, and I apologize to you. <laughs> Sorry. You're blacklisted from this pit and all Southern Conference pit. How long's the blacklist? Forever, boy, and your daddy, too. Oh. Oh, right. I owe you $25, don't I? Uh, I'll tell you, Mr. Mansfield, I, I didn't bring no cash with me. I, you know, I was so sure I was going to win, I just left it all at home. But I got some at home, and as soon as I get there, I'm going to get it. I'm going to bring it here and give it to you. I just do what I do. Ah, you got the wing. Let go of my chicken. <laughs> Dear Mary Elizabeth, we have got to make a decision about what to do with our lives until you've been to a cockfight or have seen me in the cockpit. We won't ever have any understanding. I'm sending you two tickets to the Milledgeville tournament for March the 15th and 16th. Oh, my love, Frank. Yes, you've got to give me a fighting chance.
Come on, boo. I got no I got no I got no I got no Look, Mr. Mansfield. Fight Mr. Whipple and Mr. Chocolate will both show five, ten weights. You panelists get ready. Put a hundred on the red! Bill, you bird. Get ready. Right. On your line. Put another Good hundred on the red! Come on, hundred! Don't suppose you've heard the good news. Get ready. On your line. Remember Doty White? Well, I married her, Frank. The chocolate Spanish wins. Hey, Jerky, head on. Frank, she's uh, she's got the wild idea from somewhere that you can talk, and uh, and she's afraid you're going to say something about uh, you and her. And, uh, well, I know it's a lot of crap, but you, you know how women are. Mr. Pete Chocolate, the Derby winner, and Jack Burt, close sucker. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll tell her I talked to you. Mr. Big one, you've been waiting on, folks. Shapes and no weight limits. You build them up, General. I call 25 20. I'm on the black chicken. I'll take 25 to 30. I'll take it. You're on. I'll take 25 to 30. 25 to 30 on the red. I'll take 30 to 20. I'll take 100 to 80. I'll take 50 to 35. 50 to 35 on the black. 25 to 30. All right, you got it. 50 to 30 on the black. I got the black fruit. Get him.
on Mrs. Burke. Well, if we don't count our dead chickens, we're $3,800 ahead on the Derby and the main winnings. Now, if you want to, we can skip either Chattanooga or Biloxi and spend the extra time conditioning for Milledgeville. When the pressure's on, gentlemen, a promoter's just got to do the best he can. When the SPCA got a stander up, why, the sheriff just had to go along with them. That's all there is to it. County elections, you see. But I got next to the city officials without no trouble. So and instead of fighting out to the game club, why, we can stage our little derby right here in the hotel without no trouble. Just take a feel of this, this wonderful pit floor. Why, uh, a carpet like this, all nylon, makes a wonderful pit. And you don't have to worry none about damages, neither, because that's my lookout. We also got exclusive use of the service elevator out here to bring the cocks up from the basement garage. There won't be many spectators, but you'll be able to get any bets covered because there's three really big money men flying in this afternoon from Nashville. Frankly, gentlemen, I got I think... a question. What do we do with the dead cocks, Mr. Reed? That's an excellent question, Mr. Whipple. The dead cocks will be stacked in the bathtub. Yeah, any more questions? Yes, sir. What do we use for the drag pit? The VIP suite will be used for the drag, but the main pit will be right here in this room with all the furniture removed. You can heal in that other bedroom past the bathroom there where Mr. Berodinsky's standing. Uh, any more questions? Well, that's it then. The fighting starts at 10 a.m. in the morning. Mimeograph schedules will be run off and slipped under your doors tonight. Now, if you gentlemen will give me a list of all your weights, why, I'll get started on the match. chickens in a red. But we could get fed off those Nashville gamblers. Look, why don't you take our derby birds on to Cook's Hollow? I'll take the other birds in a truck, go to a motel outside of town, come back and do some gambling anyway. I should have brought another handkerchief. When I ask Fred Reed for that entry fee back, he's gonna cry. See on the board, you looking for five two to fight. Well, you give away an ounce, and we got a five three if we're gonna take them. Come on, Mr. Mansfield, little Joe. Have you tell little Joe? Uh, Mr. Mansfield hadn't fought in this neck of woods for some time, Tom. Well, he's a six time winner. Can't fight him here though, cause he's crowd shy. But you come out to our place, we'll give you a private hack. Tell you what. I'll give you two to one, and, and you can name them out. Oh, <laughs> we ain't gonna risk old little Joe just on $50, huh? $500. And you gave him two to one. Little Joe can take him, Daddy. Hmm. You got yourself a bet. Mm-hmm. You just follow us on out whenever you're ready. It's a trick, Frank. People just got a square of linoleum in his cockpit. He rubs rosin on little Joe's feet, and on that slick wax surface, the other cock hasn't got a chance. I got a chunk of rosin for you here. That way, at least you start out even, except that little Joe's won at least 16 fights. Leave the coops here and come back after it's all over if you want to. Up. Hands over your heads. Anybody that moves gets a head blasted off. You 
get that chicken? You get the other. Get out of the pit and up against the walls. <laughs> now, I'm just going to say this once and only once, so pay attention. When I point this thing at you, if you pull off the pants, throw them over on that sheet. But not before I tell you to. Then put your hands back up over your head. Keep your back. I'll hold it for you, Mr. Mansfield. Woo! Feels just like a baseball. <laughs> it's a shame for little Joe to kill a pretty little chicken like this. <laughs> we just about finished, Mr. Mansfield. Tom be referee if that's all right with you.
No, you didn't had no hit him so hard there. That little Joe was his pet. He had a right to be mad losing him so quick, like. I'm a little short of thousand dollars, Mr. Mansfield, but I'll give you three fifty now. You got to take a rest and game foul. And we'll go on down to run. You can pick yourself out six roosters. Well, most of my stock's law grazed, but I got three palmettos. You can't get no better cutters than palmettos. Oh, ten's all the stock I got. You can't take all ten. Oh, come on, man. Best not hold him under that too long, Mr. Mainfield. He like to get drowned. gentlemen life passes this way but once notwithstanding the hindus and i say celebrate a victory twice once before the magic event and once afterwards a ritual is what it is religious mystical in its power to invoke the gods of lightning victory as the top glass fills it overflows into the next and on down into eternity the mystic realm of the great cock. <laughs> a monument. To all, all American cockfighters, a hearty salute. The Anglo-Polish team of Mansfield and Baradinsky salute you. Gentlemen, coxmen, into the faith. Villageville! Senator Foxhall awarded the medal to the man he thought deserved it. He didn't have to win the tourney to get the Cockfighter of the Year award. The senator hadn't given the award to anybody in three years, and it was possible that he wouldn't give the medal again this year. I didn't want to think about it. assigned to you up at the house. There's someone mighty anxious to see you up there. Well, you go ahead, Frank. I'll unlock. I've never seen someone so anxious to see Mr. Middleton. Ed Middleton? Frank thought you meant his fiance. expect to see me here, did you? Well, I'm not here as any spectator. I'm chief referee. And don't think I won't be watching every move you make. You know, I uh, promised Martha I'd quit, but 
Milledgeville only comes once a year, so she slipped my collar for a few days. Say, uh, you got a partner now? I guess I'll have to ask him how my little white chicken's getting along. Come on, buy you a drink. Another thing I want to know is, how come they didn't catch you with your pants down in Chattanooga? It looks good, Frank. You're going to win the Cockfighter of the Year medal. Oh, you don't have to go downtown. I'll phone down for the hotel reservations for Mary Elizabeth, if you want me to. Hey, Frank. No matter how we come out tomorrow, I'll always be grateful to you for getting me this far. Make the bet an even thousand between little David and your chicken. Ed and Pete okayed it while they tallied the score up. Frank? Jack said I had to apologize to you. Mr. Baradinsky. Oh, yes. Russian, aren't you, Mr. Baradinsky? Uh, no. Polish. You look Russian. Well, anyway, you're in good hands with Frank Mansfield. I knew Frank's granddaddy. And if you listen to Frank, Mr. Baradinsky, you'll learn a lot about the game file business. Isn't that right, Ed? Frank could teach us a lot of things if he wanted to say anything. That's what I mean. General Severus, before he invaded Great Britain, made his Roman legion watch cockfights for three days. The example was enough. Dinner is served. They don't feed game fowl right in Poland, Mr. Baradinsky. Game cocks can't fight on raw potatoes. I'll keep that in mind, sir. Four generations in Evanston. He talks to me like I just got off the boat. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Southern Conference Tourney. Now, we want all of you to have a good time. There is only one rule. Conduct yourselves as ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before the tourney is over, you may want to place a small wager. Know who you bet with, because there may be internal revenue agents in the crowd. <laughs> Come on, I'll take Come on. On the red red. One more hundred, I'll get it. Yeah. One more hundred, I'll get it. Hit! 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 Come on, Green. 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 Let's go to the drag pit. Looks like this one's going to drag on all day. Come on, I got more. Come on, I got more. Come on, I got I I'm referee. 
in this fight, Mr. Mansfield. Get ready. Stand on him. Come on. Get ready. Come on. Come on, Grayson. Come on. Come on, Grayson. Come on. Number five win. I committed some kind of a foul. We're pushing on the center score. First time I wasn't sure, nor the second when number five whistled. But the third time it was obvious. Did you gentlemen see me push? Are you arguing with my decision? You damn right I am. That's a fifty dollar fine. Anything else? Will you take a check? Anybody else? Hey, Frank, we're doing the pit in less than five minutes. You want to handle? So far, it looks pretty even. You think we'll win tomorrow? Two thousand. You give us two to one odds, we will. Get ready. David's been on a country walk all season. White Lightning here has had to fight just to qualify. You asking for odds, Frank? While the final results of the tourney are being tabulated, there will be an extra hack between entries four and five. Both 5-2, Peach. Both birds are 5-2, and they'll fight in short heels. All right, let's fill them. I got 20 in the way. Okay, clutch. Come on, clutch them. 20 in the way. Get ready. Two to one on the way, bird.
Come on, Ray. Come on. Get in there, Ray. Get him there. Get ready. Hit. Come on, Ray. Get ready. Back. One hand under the bird only. Hit. Count. Count's going on. That's what I call a dead game chicken, Frank. One for Mr. Mansfield. I'm picking up, Ed. My rooster's dead. Well, they're both dead, but you're still entitled to two more counts. Get ready. Get them carried out. The winner, Mr. Mansfield. I don't want you to touch me, ever. I should have watched you in the ring long ago. You are not the man I fell in love with. Now I know you never were. I didn't watch those poor chickens fight, and I watched your face. No pity, no love, nothing. I think that bird has more of a heart than you ever will have. He sure as hell has more of a voice. Thank you. This is your substitute for a heart. At least it'll serve to remind me what a damn fool I have been. Hey, Frank, Frank, did you hear the announcement? Senator Foxhall just awarded you Cockfighter of the Year. Come on, let's hustle. As your partner, I'm entitled to a little reflected glory. Maybe you can sleep with your medal, Frank, and eat it all at the same time. Maybe it'll give you some comfort in your old age. Everything all right between you and her? She loves me, Omar. Come on. You go collect the winnings and I'll go get that medal. 